Hello everyone. Good day. Welcome to vSparks. In this video, we are going to see the concepts of Kubernetes cluster and pod networking. We are going to discuss on how the Kubernetes nodes and objects communicates with each other. If you like this video, please subscribe to vSparks channel and click the bell icon for the latest updates. This is the agenda of this video. We are going to discuss on these topics in this video. Kubernetes networking. We will divide the Kubernetes networking subject into two parts. First is the Kubernetes cluster communication. This section lets you to know how the nodes and control plane communicates with each other. When we say nodes, it includes both the master and the worker nodes. Second is the Kubernetes objects like pods, services and its communication. This section is further classified into container to container communication in a pod, pod to pod communication, services to pod communication and finally external to service communication. In this lecture, we will be discussing about the cluster networking and pod networking. Nodes and Control Plane Communication Let us now discuss how the Kubernetes control plane and the nodes communicate with each other. As we all know, the Kubernetes cluster is composed of master nodes and the worker nodes. These nodes can be a physical machine or it can be a virtual machine. For this case, let us assume it as a physical machine. All the nodes are well connected to the core physical network. If we are deploying the cluster in a cloud-based environment, then the core network would be a virtual network. Now, these nodes will be assigned a static IP addresses from that network. Apart from the IP addresses, nodes will be having a MAC address as well. These are the prerequisites before setting up a Kubernetes cluster. Now, with this setup, nodes in this network can reach each other using the physical network. On top of these nodes, Kubernetes cluster is created. Now we should understand how the Kubernetes cluster components communicate with each other. Of course, the Kubernetes cluster components also uses the core physical network for their communication. First, we will look how the external user reaches the control plane. If we look at the control plane components, the only component that is exposed to the outside world is API server. If we look closely at the master node, the control plane API server is configured to listen for remote connections on the secure HTTPS port, typically 6443. Similarly, the other control plane components also communicate with the API server over the secure port. The control plane components like scheduler, controller manager, etcd, kubelet also listens in these ports but it will accept the inbound traffic only from the API server. None of the control plane components apart from the API server is designed to expose to the external world. Now we will see how the control plane interacts with the worker nodes. Basically, there are two primary communication paths from the control plane to the worker nodes. First is the API server to the kubelet process. Second is from the API server to any node, pod or service through the proxy service called kube proxy. Till now, we have seen how the control plane and the nodes communicate with each other. In the upcoming slides, we are going to discuss how the Kubernetes objects communicate with each other. Remember, Kubernetes does not provide a native solution for the Kubernetes networking. Let us see what are all the general rules laid down by Kubernetes when it comes to pods and service networking. Every pod should have its own IP address. Pods on a node should be able to reach all the other pods on all the other nodes without NAT. Node agents like system daemons, kubelet should communicate with all the parts in that node. Containers within a pod share a single network namespace so that they can communicate with each other using loopback IP addresses. 
Keeping all these rules in mind, let us see the next slides. What happens when a node or a pod is created? When you add or create a node in a cluster, all the Kubernetes control plane components or the agents will start to run and it interacts with the other nodes with the help of a NIC card or the Ethernet card as shown in this picture. Nodes can be a master node or it can be a worker node. Along with this, a bridge network will also be created to ease the pod communication. But why a bridge network? We will discuss this part in the upcoming slides. What happens when a pod is created? As the first step of the pod creation, a network namespace will be created along with the pod. Second, virtual Ethernet pairs will be created. One end will be attached to the pod and the other end will be attached to the bridge network. Third, an IP address to the pod will be assigned. Fourth, all the interfaces including the loopback interface will be activated or enabled. Fifth, IP table rules will be added to the network namespaces in order for the pod to reach the outside world. Finally, IP table rules and traffic forwarding will be enabled in the base machine in order to forward the traffic from the pod to the outside world. As we discussed already, Kubernetes does not provide a native solution for the Kubernetes networking. Then who creates and manages all these stuffs for the Kubernetes objects? It is the container networking interfaces or the plugins creates and manages all these things. If you remember correctly, in one of our previous lectures, we have installed these plugins as part of our cluster creation. A sample snippet is given here. Here, we have installed the Weave network plugin as our container networking interface. Need for bridges. We remember the general rules laid by Kubernetes in the previous slides. Let us first discuss what is a bridge. A bridge is a device that connects two different LAN segments into one. This bridge device operates at OSI layer number two, that is data link layer. What does a bridge do? It simply inspects the incoming traffic from one LAN segment and forward the same to the other LAN segment. In our case of Kubernetes networking, the LAN segments are nothing but our network namespaces and the physical network. As per the Kubernetes rules, each LAN segment should be able to reach each other with its unique IP address. System daemons and Kubernetes processes like kubelet, proxy should be able to reach the network namespaces or the parts. Bridges offers these features that satisfies all the rules. It has the ability to connect and communicate with multiple LAN segments. That is why we are using network bridges for the Kubernetes networking. Open vSwitch Linux bridges are some of the solutions available in the market for creating virtual bridges. Container networking interfaces. There are many third party vendors available in the market provide the container networking solutions. To name some, Calico, Cilium, Weave Networks, VMware, NSX, etc, etc. These plugins may slightly vary in their features, but all of them will satisfy the core functionality for the Kubernetes networking. Container to container communication. Container to container communication happens to the pods network namespace. Every pod has its own network namespace and the containers inside that pod share the same IP address and ports. All the communication between these containers happens through the local host or the loopback interfaces. As per this example, when Nginx container wants to reach the log container, it can simply call localhost colon 8080 to reach log container. Port 8080 is the exposed port number for the log container. Similarly, when the log container wants to reach Nginx, it can simply call localhost colon 80 to reach the Nginx container. 
Remember that these containers within a pod should not expose themselves in the same port number. Pod to pod communication in the same node. Unlike container to container networking, pod to pod communication happens using the real IPs whether you deploy the pod in the same node or on a different node in the cluster. In this case, each pod on a node has its own network namespace and each pod has its own IP addresses. Both these pods are connected to the same bridge network. So the communication between these pods will happen through the bridge network. When your data is sent from the red pod to the blue pod, the flow of events happens like this. Red pod's traffic flows from the pod's virtual interface that is veth0-red-in to the virtual bridge using veth0-red-out. From there, traffic is flown to the blue pod using its virtual interfaces. In this case, the virtual interfaces for the blue pod are veth0-blue-in and veth0-blue-out respectively. Pod to pod communication in a different node. When it comes to pod to pod communication in different nodes, the routing happens with the help of bridge network and also with the help of cluster network. To do so, proper route table entries must be added in the namespace to forward the traffic to the outside world via the bridge. Then we have to enable NATing and IP forwarding rules in the host machine. Finally, we have to add the route table rules in the host machines to enable the communication from one part to the other part which is placed in the different node. Now we will see how the data flows from red part to the blue part. Red part's traffic flows from the part's virtual interface that is veth0-red-in to the virtual bridge number 1 using veth0-red-out. It then reaches the physical network using the host machine's network interface which is ETH0. From the physical network, the traffic is forwarded to the virtual bridge number 2 using Node2's network interface. From there, the traffic is flown to the blue part using its virtual interfaces. In this case, the virtual interfaces for the blue part are veth0-blue-in and veth0-blue-out respectively. This is how the communication from one part to the other part happens in a different node. Well, that's it for this lecture. This is the summary that we have discussed so far in this video. Thank you from vSparks and thank you for watching this video.